Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about surface collisions and the coefficient of restitution. So a surface collision is any collision where a moving body bounces off some immovable surface. Uh, so a basketball bouncing off a floor is an example of this, uh, a pretty simple example uh, for this. But anything where one body is not moving, the other body is kind of bouncing off of it, that's a surface collision. Um, so instances such as this, uh, the moving body is going to have some pre-collision initial velocity as well as some post-collision final velocity, uh, which we're going to relate to one another using something called the coefficient of restitution. All right, so what is the coefficient of restitution? Um, the simple answer is it's a measure of the bounciness of the object and the surface. Uh, so the surface can be bouncy, the, the object can be bouncy. And it's going to be some number between 1 and 0. And we're going to use the Greek letter epsilon, which is kind of a scripty E, uh, as the uh, numerical representation of this. Uh, so specifically, if we were to drop an object straight down, uh, it, the speed of the object immediately after the impact divided by the speed of the object directly before the impact uh, is the coefficient of restitution. So the more it bounces back, the higher it's going to be. Um, so some initial velocity... I have the impact, I have some final velocity, it bounces back up, uh, and e, or sorry, epsilon, our coefficient of restitution, is negative final velocity over initial velocity. The reason we have that negative in there uh, is because of our change in direction. So initially the basketball is going down, uh, after the impact it's going up, uh, and so we put a negative in there, so our coefficient of, of restitution is going to be a positive number in the end. All right, so... With this coefficient of restitution, we can talk about the types of collisions that we have. Uh, everything from a perfect bounce, where you get all of your velocity right back out of the impact, uh, to something where there's no bounce at all. It just hits the surface and stops. Uh, and most things are going to be somewhere in the middle. You're going to have some sort of bounce, but it's not going to be 100% uh, of velocity afterwards. Uh, so that perfect bounce is known as an elastic collision. Uh, and nothing is truly elastic. Uh, but rigid bodies colliding without any permanent deformation can get close. Uh, so something that's really close is billiard balls. Uh, when two billiard balls impact one another, they are nearly an elastic collision. Uh, an elastic collision is also it's 100% of the kinetic energy is conserved because you have the same velocity before and afterwards, and your coefficient of restitution is going to be equal to 1. Uh, so that's the perfect bounce side of things. On the no bounce side of things, uh, this occurs when there's no bounce at all. Uh, all of the energy is dissipated within a collision, uh, and our coefficient of restitution would be zero in this case because we'd have a zero final velocity. Uh, so this is an example. If you imagine kind of deflating a basketball, you drop it on the ground, it just hits the ground and plop, doesn't bounce back up at all. That's an inelastic collision in this case. All right, so everything else is a semi-elastic collision. So it's somewhere between elastic and inelastic. Um, and some energy is conserved, but some energy is also dissipated in the collision. Uh, and this is a range of values. This is not a specific type of collision. Uh, but it's you know, more a coefficient of more than zero, but less than one. Uh, and we need to know that coefficient of restitution to know how much bounce we're going to get out of the uh, collision. All right, so those are our three types of collisions. We have elastic, semi-elastic, and inelastic collisions. Um, and... <clears throat> When we have a angled impact, uh, this is an instance where, you know, we rather than dropping the basketball straight down, we kind of bounce it off at an angle. Uh, and things get a little more complicated in this case. So, for example, in the instance below, uh, the final velocity over the initial velocity is not going to be equal to our coefficient of restitution. So, uh, we'll talk about why that is in a second. So, when we have this, we have to uh, add an extra step into our analysis. All right, so uh, these instances of in angled impact will break the motion down into motion that's perpendicular to our surface and motion that is parallel to our surface. And so we're going to call this the normal and the tangential directions for our surface. Uh, so we want to draw that normal and tangential directions directly on our diagram. We're going to need those uh, for our analysis. And we want to break any known velocities down into velocities in the normal direction and velocities in the tangential direction. Uh, so sometimes that's going to be x and y, sometimes it's going to be some other angle. Uh, but again, that normal is always perpendicular to the surface, tangential is always parallel to our surface. All right, so here I've drawn in 
a basketball is bouncing off the ground. It's the same impact we had before. Tangential is along the surface. Normal is perpendicular to that. Uh, and the reason we use normal and tangential directions is because the impact force is always going to be in the normal direction. Um, so this is the normal force of the impact, and normal forces are in the normal direction. Uh, so friction forces, unless you've got a lot of spin on the object, it's usually going to be a negligible amount of friction force. All right, so the, that's important because with no forces in the tangential direction, the tangential velocity is not going to change. So that tangential component of the initial velocity is the same as the tangential component of the final velocity. So that part doesn't change. Uh, what does change is so our coefficient of restitution is instead going to be used to relate the normal velocities before and after impact. So if I just take the normal velocities for final and initial, uh, our coefficient of restitution does hold true for that part. Uh, so with this whole process, what I do is I would take my initial velocity, break it down into the normal component, in this case it would be the y direction, and the tangential comp component would be the x x direction. Um, so tangential component final is just the same thing as the initial. It uh, kind of keeps on going in the x direction with the same velocity. Uh, and in the y direction, whatever this um, normal component is here for the initial velocity, that goes down here. If I know my coefficient of restitution, I could figure out what the uh, normal or y component of my velocity is after the impact. So these two equations are going to let us relate our velocities before and after our impact. To find the angles of impact, we want to know, say, something like this theta initial or theta final, uh, as well as to find the relationship between the speeds. So what is the overall magnitude of this velocity? What is the overall magnitude of this velocity? We simply need to treat these velocities as vectors. So break everything down, solve for everything in terms of normal and tangential components. Uh, use the Pythagorean theorem. So once I know the uh, normal and tangential, or sorry, tangential and normal components of v final, I can find you know a squared plus b squared gives me the overall magnitude of that. Um, and then I'm going to use the inverse tangent function uh, to find what's known as the angle of approach and angle of departure from my bounce here. Uh, so inverse tangent function, uh, opposite of or adjacent in our, our triangles, like we've been doing uh, a lot with uh, dynamics. Uh, to find that. All right, so solving a collision problem, the process overall uh, involves kind of accounting for factors at play between some initial state and some final state. Uh, so step number one, we always want to set up a diagram showing the object bouncing off the surface. Similar to what I had with that basketball, I want to show an initial velocity, a final velocity, uh, any known directions, any known magnitudes, you want to include that in your diagram. Uh, you want to identify the type of collision. So Figure out if it's elastic, your um, coefficient of restitution will be equal to 1. If it's inelastic, it's not a very interesting problem. It's just going to stick on the surface. Uh, or if it's semi-elastic, you will hopefully be given that value. Or sometimes you might need to figure out your coefficient of restitution. Uh, so after you figure that out, you also want to clearly identify the normal and tangential directions in your diagram. So draw them in. Uh, draw those axes, the normal and tangential axes, onto your diagram. All right, so once we have our diagram, you're going to use the diagram to break down velocities into normal and tangential components and use the equations we discussed from the earlier slide uh, to relate the initial and final velocities. Remember, the tangential component doesn't change. The normal component is related by our coefficient of restitution. All right, finally, once we have those equations, we simply use some algebra to solve for the equations for any unknown quantities, whether that is the final velocities, uh, the angle, uh, theta, etc. We can solve for up to two unknowns with these two equations. So with that, that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.